All right, good morning, guys. You know, uh, I think W.C. Fields said that never follow children or animals. If he had known Dan John, he'd add that one to the list. So I can no way be as funny as Dan is, but I'm going to do my best to keep you guys occupied for at least the next 45 minutes of what I have to say. So John kind of went through quickly what my background was. Uh, I, I've been tremendously passionate about kettlebells. Uh, I think uh, the longest time in the last 16 years I've been away from being, using a kettlebell was a surgery I had. And I had to be away for like two weeks before I couldn't touch a kettlebell again. So that's the longest time I actually use them. So it gives much daily occurrence to me, or several times a day. Um, what I'm going to go through today, it, it's funny because you know, we, we, you know, after sitting here for you know, almost the better part of a day, um, there has been a theme that's been kind of running through all these presentations. You kind of catch the same high points as you go through. You're going to hear me talk about a lot of the same things as well about using common sense and assessments and using your and, and, and your word not and how to train people who are just normal everyday people. Okay, so I'm going to give you my insights on teaching kettlebell focused strength conditioning classes, uh, how to manage a class and class interaction. Rolando has some fantastic talk thoughts about that. And I'm going, here we go again. I'm going to say what Rolando said again in my presentation, okay? And how to make the workout safe, effective, and really, um, Mark Fisher Fitness is, you know, they are what I consider to be the funnest workouts in, around. You, know, you watch their stuff, their, 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 uh, their videos are spectacular, and they must have a lot of fun doing those workouts. And I try to make my workouts as fun as possible, too, because, you know, people aren't coming to you to get their butt handed to them. <laughs> they, they, they want it to be challenged, but, you know, they really, really want to have fun, too. So you work hard, play hard, and have a lot of fun, too. So here's what I wanted to find out. Okay, so we had a really, really diverse group of people in this room. How many of you guys, by a raise of hands, are, are training professional athletes? Leave your hands up, okay? How many of you professional MMA fighters, tier one spec op personnel, Marty, Dan, okay, good, okay. Military tactical personnel, law enforcement and fire personnel, actors or actresses. Okay, so now, is that the, uh, so, so when I say you're training them, so I've done all of them, I've trained all these people and, and more, okay? How many make, how many people, that makes up the majority, let's say 70% or above your clients? Okay, so I just eliminated two-thirds of the people who had their hand raised initially, okay? So, how many of you guys train accountants? Programmers, teachers, medical professionals, scientists, soccer moms and dads, the guy who empties your trash, delivers your mail. Okay, so everybody else. All right, so here's what I want you to think about, okay? What they want and what they really need, okay? So, what do the guys want? Guys want to read men's fitness and train like the next latest Navy SEAL workout or MMA workout, okay? And Dan just said this a minute ago. <laughs> the women want to train in the blood movie stars or someone who's on the cover of a fitness or shape magazine, okay? Well, that's awesome, and that's, you know, everybody has their own fantasy as to what they, who they think they are and who they want to be. You know, in, in my life, I'm a superhero. Right? Have been for years and years and years. Everybody calls me Batman. There's probably a lot of reasons for that. But so what do they really want? Okay, so when they come to you, they, they want to think they're a Navy SEAL or they're a fitness model or a star, okay? But they want to be challenged. They want to come in and do something that's completely outside the spectrum of what they do the other 23 hours a day, okay? They want to sweat and, and, and occasionally cuss, and most of those cussings usually direct in my direction, okay? And they want to feel like they accomplished something. They want to leave after that hour and say, you know, I just did something that I thought I probably couldn't do, or three months ago, or six weeks ago, I had no capacity to do that, okay? They want to feel like every single workout is a success story. Okay, so what do they need? All right, so and Dan, Dan John just said, you know, his perfect thing was the, the women want to stretch and the guys need to, okay? The women, you know, they, they, they need to do strength work, okay, and the guys do mobility work. It's true. Okay, everybody needs a solid background in strength training, okay? This matter with kettlebell, with a barbell, or body weight. I, I, I use all three of those in every one of my workouts. You'll see for the most part, I have very few strict barbell workouts, very few strict kettlebell workouts, very few strict body weight workouts, okay? This, well, that's the only element we, we address, okay? But they, everybody in my gym, from the 12-year-old to the 75-year-old, my partner is 75 years old teaching two to three classes a day. Our oldest client is 84, okay? And everything in between, okay? They all need strength training. Doesn't matter who you are, okay? 
They also need mobility and flexibility. Now, I have a tremendous number of teachers and runners. Go, go figure. I have no idea why. I run like an ox with hemorrhoids. It's, 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 really, it's really not pretty. And if I have to chase you down, I'm going to lay a beating on you. You're never going to forget, OK? But I have my runners come in. Oh, I've been stretching for years. And I go, what the hell are you stretching while you're doing that? You know, It's all rounded back, and they're broken. I'm going. Nothing productive is being stretched during while you're doing this, okay? So you've really got to, some people who are experts at stretching, you've got to re-educate them on what mobility is and what flexibility is and actually explain to them what are we actually trying to do, okay? And once again, going back to, to, to Coach Fury, is, you know, community fun and play. You know, if, if I can say, if you come with one thing is that A, make the workouts fun. And, and, and also, I'll get to that point in a minute, they have to have a common language. And that common language is they enjoy the workouts, they're having a great time, and they, it's a success story at the end of every workout. Um, cheers, crying, clapping, pats in the back, you know, those are the things that make people come back to you every single time, okay? Pros and cons of group strength training workouts. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say, pros. Okay, you can try, if, if you, if, so many of you are probably doing lots of one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I do probably, between three and five one-on-one -on -one sessions a day, okay, I teach between three and maybe three or four group classes a day, okay? So while during my prime time, I get to three people, okay, during the middle of the day, okay? <laughs> during my prime time at night, I'll get to 50 or 60 at one time, okay? So most people, the least amount of time. My average workouts, seven to 12 people, Big and high end workouts are 25. Saturday and Sunday mornings, Sunday mornings are our Medal of Honor workouts. So these are all partner workouts, team workouts that are uh, dedicated to a Medal of Honor recipient, okay? So it's, it's like I'll be working with John. It's, they're, they're fun, great, intense workouts. What about 25 people slinging kettlebells in a, at, you know, on a Sunday morning, okay? It's kind of like our church. We come in there, you know, praise the Lord, pass the kettlebells, all that good stuff, okay? So, you don't need a whole lot of equipment. Okay, you, you, can, you can do, I mean, I started off doing training, by accident, doing uh, group training classes at the local um, uh, Bally's Total Fitness with two kettlebells and like seven guys. Because they saw me doing my work, like, hey, can I jump in? Sure, why not? Next thing you know, I got six, seven guys that were monopolized in the whole weight room, okay? I eventually got my ass thrown out. I shouldn't say that. I, got my, I was asked to leave, <laughs> okay? Because I was training people. I wasn't training, I wanted to work out. And so these guys wanted to join in. Right, so small per person footprint, okay? I can literally train most people in this square right here. Okay, that's all I need. As long as you can get a, a burpee inside there, you can do it, okay? As long as I can do a pump inside that same frame, I can do it with under 25 square feet or less, okay? One trainer can work one person, three person. If they're good, they can manage 20 or 30 people at a time, okay? And it depends on how well trained they are in advance as well, okay? Also, leverage your time, okay? So I charge $120 per hour. Three people per, three, usually three to five people per day, okay? I get $20 per person per workout in a group class, okay? So while I may bring home, you know, three or $400 for the course of an afternoon, I'm gonna bring home $400 for one hour class. Okay, so think about, you, 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 you go, I'm doing a lot of good personal training. I, and the, the people who I work with, the one-on-one, -on -one, they're, they're only one-on-one. -on -one. They have a special requirement for me to help them. They would not fit into a group class. That's why I work with them. People who can fit in there, as soon as I can, I get them into the group classes. I get away from the one-on-one -on -one work as fast as I possibly can, throw them into a group class. All right, so cons. So, and I'm gonna be bangless, I'm sure, okay? Most of your group fitness classes, your, your, your um, um, Orange Theory, boot camp stuff, okay? What are they doing? Lots of cardio and busy work, okay? I had a guy who let my, so let me give you some context. My workouts in my gym are from 12 to 23 minutes long. That is the workout. We, we fill the hour with mobility work, basically prep work, okay? 12 to 23 minutes long, okay? I had a client leave my gym because the workouts weren't long enough, okay? I said, okay, great. So he went to a gym where the workouts were 60 minutes, okay? What are they doing? Bicep curls, walking lunges, carrying plates over top of their head. I said, what are you accomplishing in an hour that I can't get to you in 12 minutes? Because you're done. 
If you do a 12 minute workout with me, you're done for the day. As a matter of fact, you don't even want to drink a glass of drink, oh, drink because you're too tired to pick the damn glass up. Okay? So time is really not a good indicator of the workout. If I can finish you in 12 minutes and give you what you can get done in 12 minutes, you don't need the other 48 minute or part of the workout. Okay? So not, not really true strength and conditioning. Are they using a load that's going to cause any sort of adaptation? Okay, so we're looking for, in, in these workouts, do we get an adaptive response? Are they getting stronger so the next time they see Jaffo or Snafu or, 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 or Hot Sweaty Bells, that they, have, they can do more work or use heavier load? Okay, I'll get back to that in a minute, okay? So, uh, crush the athletes every encounter, okay? If I, I don't want to see pictures of your hands being torn apart. I don't want to see pictures of you, you know, hunched over a trash can puking, okay? I want you to be done mentally and physically, but if you had to do it again, you could do it again. You, could, you had the capacity, so you know what? That sucked, <laughs> that was really horrible, but I want to do it again and I can do it again, okay? Also, I have this thing, it's quality, on my board, it's quality, under, under a line, and then quality, okay? It's quantity can never trump quality. It's the other way around, quality over quantity. I don't care, I don't care how much weight, how fast you can do really crappy work, <laughs> that means nothing to me. Okay, I would rather see you do two reps right than 12 reps wrong. Okay, I want to build a foundation of belt on quality as opposed to quantity itself. Look at that, I'm on slide 14, I've got 30 minutes to go. Okay, all right, so, so great group workouts, okay, are physically, mentally, physically challenging, mentally challenging, and are scalable. Okay, and I'll explain kind of a, we, we toss around scalable all the time, and it's grossly misused because People don't scale, okay? People will not scale because they're afraid of doing something different in a group environment. It's really, and so if I said, if I sent you to the gym on your own, you would scale by yourself because there's no one there watching you scale the workout. But if you got 20 people in a room, they are really, really reticent to scale the workouts. All right, so workouts should combine progressive resistance training, anaerobic conditioning, and mobility work, depending upon the athlete. So going back to the beginning, okay? I'm training people who spend eight to 10 hours on their butts every day. And then what do they do when they go home? They spend another four hours in front of the TV set, okay? So what do I wanna do? I wanna hit them so that they get some good strength work that I can just jump into their anaerobic capacity and nail it pretty, pretty hard, okay? And then make them move better, okay? I'm gonna, my goal is to, with my mobility work is, combat this, okay? Dan John talks about Yanda's, uh, uh, what happens as you get older? You've got to combat the, the active part of aging, okay? I literally have clients who've been running for 10 years who come in like this, okay? And what is my job? Get them back standing up like upright human beings, okay? So workouts should not overemphasize one training element, okay? So in other words, some, some group workouts, they do all running, okay? You can't do just one thing, okay? I have runners who come in all the time. They can't do a push-up. I have a guy who can run circles around me for hours at a time, can't do a single push-up, can't do a single body weight squat, zero. And I kid you not, this guy's a great, great runner, okay? But he has no strength in his legs to hold himself, no posterior strength, okay? Quad dominant, big calves, okay? Broken person, this is the guy, if I put a blindfold on him and had him run five steps, he'd hit the wall. His body is so broken, he will literally curve off to the side and run face versus into the wall, not know it. Okay? So what I want you to think about is you gotta balance the workouts. Now, so quality over quantity, okay? And I'm I'm a technique Nazi. Okay? Every time we have a workout, we devote time to the beginning of the workout for one thing. Technique review. Okay? I have clients, I started teaching in groups, I actually opened a gym gym, okay, eight years ago. I have clients who've been with me since the second day. Okay? They still review technique every single class. I don't care if it's swings or goblet squats or push-ups or pull-ups, what do we do? We, re we just go over move. So we have movement standards, okay? That movement standard is reviewed every single workout. Why? Because even though you've been doing it for three or four years, you may, it may take you three or four years to figure out, oh, he really did mean clutch my butt. <laughs> okay? And that actually works better, okay? It's, I'm always amazed when someone who's been with me for three or four or five years, and I've been cueing this person for the same thing for three or four or five years, and all of a sudden, 
the lights go off. Oh, oh, is that what you meant? Why didn't you say that? I've been saying that for five years. Jesus. All right. So beginners. And when, in my class, literally in my classes, I'll have someone who's on their first class and someone who's been there for eight years. I have a, I, I should have thought of this a little harder. Um, five RKCs, three HKCs, and I think one or two SCCs, is that right? Yeah. In my gym. Okay. And these are all the guys who've been around forever and ever. Okay. So, so. They don't need my help anymore. Occasionally I can ping them and catch something and I can make it tight up. They don't really need me. They just come because we have a good time, okay? But the rest of the class, they're working on quality. I don't care what your numbers are. I don't care what your load is. Your job is to do quality movement throughout the workout, okay? I can say to those guys, okay, you know what? You did this workout, you know, three months ago. You need to add, you, know, you need to jump the next kettlebell size. You need to really start challenging. It's too easy for you. Kettlebell's moving too fast. You were obviously not working hard enough. Let's jump kettlebell size, okay? There was a quote. I, I have to go back. So I've been a, a CrossFit Level 1 trainer uh, for, geez, nine years, eight, nine years. So I think our CrossFit gym was like, when that, well, and if you look at the CrossFit website, the old days, right, there's a list of, of, uh, of CrossFit gyms, right? And so it used to fit like one screen, and we were like there. Like we were like on the, like on the just above the where you had to start scrolling. And now there's like, what, 10, 20,000 of you know? You can't even find it if you want to. In my, in my area, when I had my CrossFit gyms, there were a total of zero CrossFit gyms. Within six months, there were five. Within eight months, there were three. <laughs> two of them, within two months, just right into the crap, right? The other three gyms, one survived. I bought the equipment the last two gyms that didn't, didn't survive, okay? Right now, I can throw a rock to the north and throw a rock to the south and hit a CrossFit gym. And this arm is a throw, I throw sidearm now. So, <laughs> so that's how close. There's five CrossFit gyms within less than two miles of my door. Five gyms, right? And I said, so, and so I can always tell when this person comes running in, they go, I'm sorry, it's my first day, I'm late. And they're like 13 years old. I said, no, you're, you belong to that CrossFit gym on the other side of that run of the thing. I said, we don't do that here, sorry. All right, so. All training elements can and should be scaled based on the athlete's skill, experience, strength, conditioning, and physical status. That is your job. Your job is to know that person well enough that you know that they really don't understand swings good enough. They're still working on, on, on deadlifts, okay? How long have they been with you? What, how, what are their strengths and their weaknesses, okay? So, you know, Dan talks about assessments. Rolanda talks about relationships. I know my athletes well enough that if I see someone come in, I go, man, you look like Donkey dude. <laughs> Rough night last night, you're not gonna work out hard today, you're just gonna work on technique. You gotta make an initial assessment. I, I sign every one of my people in. I do an assessment, they walk in the door and say, how you feeling today? How you feel, if Thursday was tough, how do you feel Saturday morning, okay? So I know that I've got to scale that person, okay? So, so cross the story, okay? Uh, Greg Glassman said that um, he is gonna develop, develop the skill set, the strength set, okay? and then go faster, okay? And then go faster still until the skill set starts to degrade, and then back off a little bit, okay? I have a real problem with the fact that your skill sets are relatively new, okay? I've been involved with the martial arts since I was 13. I'm 54. The only other person in the room I know who has a, a comparable skill set is Master Phil Ross. We've been around the same, we, we, we travel in the same circles, many of the same instructors, okay? If your technique starts to fail when you start to go fast, what do you do? Slow down, okay? You don't go faster until it completely collapses into a messy, sweaty, bloody heap on the ground. You go, well, maybe I should slow down, okay? When you're talking about overhead squats or snatching or even kettlebell snatching, like do you really want to take it to the beyond your capacity or, or competency and then say, oh, maybe I should slow down? I have a problem with that. Really bad, bad idea. But it works for CrossFit, I guess, you know? But not in my gym. All right, so, Group wads, okay? Go back to Mark Fisher Fitness, okay? Hearts and minds, guys. If you can't get them laughing, if you can't get them engaged, if you can't get them, you know, excited about every time they so, so there is a there is no question in my mind that I am scared some days when I walk into my own gym. Because I know what the work at. I don't put the workouts up on, on my website. There are some days I am terrified. Because I know I've got to work out in front of my clients doing this work, and I go, oh. This is gonna be so horrible. I use other words, but it's just gonna suck. I mean, it's gonna it sucks so bad. 
and I've got to put on the game face. Like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and knowing that I'm going to be this snotty, bloody, sweaty, sweaty mess on the ground in about 20 minutes. Okay. So community, getting people involved. You know, I had a client tell me something, and it, it brought me to tears, which is not hard to do some days. She's been with me for five years. She's an RKC, and her. I'm going to lock up. She said, "These are the people I'm going to die with." It was amazing. Sorry. Dan usually does that. Yeah. All right. So moving on. I'm a mess. Sorry, guys. Ready, set, plan. All right, so how much do you plan your workouts? I mean, how much time do you spend getting things set up? So I spend, we have a, I put 30 days of the workouts together for myself and my partner, okay? Those workouts are planned usually, in an optimum world, two to three months in advance. So I can, I can set a cycle up, okay? Sometimes it's a month in advance. Like I, I haven't done the next three months yet, but we're working on that when I get home, okay? I plan the tra plan the workouts, plan the training session. My toolbox is already put together. I'll explain that in a second. Okay. So my class times are an hour. Okay. So I have to put in the in that I got to plan for that workout what I'm doing that whole hour. Okay. Now I told you before my workouts go from 12 to 23 minutes, which gives me a lot of latitude because sometimes I don't need a whole lot of prep for some 12 minute workouts. If it's 12 minute workout, it's that high intensity. I want low skill high intensity, really just butt kicking movements that don't need a whole lot of you know, uh, fine motor skills so I don't get anybody killed in the process, okay? So I have a warm up for each workout, okay? Either one we're doing because this month we're focusing on something or something we need, so you need to prep for the workout, okay? And then what I'm doing with the room, okay? I have 2,500 square feet, which is about, I don't know, half of this room, okay? I have a whole side of the room that's a rack system for pull-ups. We have a clear wall that we use for handstands and wall balls, I guess, okay? And everything else is, is storage, okay? We have no mirrors in the place. We have one whole, one whole wall is whiteboards, which just have workouts on it and announcements, all kinds of stuff like that, okay? So you gotta know exactly what you're gonna have. So are we gonna have people you know, in one line? Are they spread out? If it's a partner workout, where do they wanna be? Where are they gonna maximize? We got box jumps in the middle, we got the bars behind us. Are people gonna be running in front of each other doing jump rope and going to the bars? So you gotta have this already in your head. How am I going to use this room so no one gets killed in the process, okay? And then also plan the equipment. You know, we do, we use the wheel of pain quite a bit, okay? You know what the wheel of pain is? At wheel, okay? One of my favorite tools of all time, okay? So we have 20 or 30 of those. But we only have a handful of other things because we don't use them that often, okay? So if you have a workout that everyone has to have, you know, Neuro grips. I have three pair of neuro grips, okay? And those are from like my, my some really strong I the, the I have a guy that makes like well Danny's obviously very, very strong, very big. He's about half the size of Danny, but you know, same sort of really tall, long frame. The strongest man in our gym is built like this. Okay? So he's always using neuro grips. And I have a couple of guys do too, but you know, I'm not gonna I don't need if I have 25 people, I don't need 25 pair of neuro grips, but I gotta know that I'm gonna have three guys who are gonna to wanna to use that piece of equipment. So you plan ahead, always think ahead before you start the workout, okay? All right, so uh, my, my partner, John Khalil, awesome man, 75 years old, been with me for over 10 years training, okay? Eight years training, okay? Uh, he's at RKC, um, he'll be 75 in December, okay? My goal is to be John Khalil in 10 years, 20 years, okay? I wanna be moving as well as he does. If you ever saw John, you wouldn't believe he's 75 years old, okay? If you ever saw him train, you'd wish to God you could do that at 75 years old, okay? So he doesn't like chaos during the workouts. He wants to know where every person's gonna be. I, I kind of like a little bit of mayhem. It kind of makes it fun, a little entertaining, you know? It gives me something to yell about and laugh about. So a little bit of chaos makes it work out a little more entertaining, okay? So here's here's kind of like, you know, what my what my my hour looks like, okay? So I give you five to seven minutes to work on your own problems, okay? now. So my thing is, really, my whole right side is all jacked up. So I spend seven minutes prepping my right side, okay? Now, if you have bad hamstrings, work your hamstrings. Bad hip flexors, work your hip flexors, okay? If you just want to do cardio, kind of warm up, get up things sweaty, that's good. The first five to seven minutes, that's your warm up. And I've probably given you what to do already. I know my athletes, well, I've already given them a, a pre-set up. I want you to do this, 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 and this every day you walk in the door. Okay, and if they're not doing it, 
I'm going to ride your little tail until you get out there and put it anyway, okay? Next thing is technique review or skill mastery, okay? So in other words, if we're, if we're doing um, deadlifts and burpees, okay, one of my favorite workouts is called Kim, okay? Uh, any workout that leaves you sweating, gasping, and wishing you were dead needs a woman's name. No question in my mind. Okay, so Kim is, Kim is deadlifts, it was deadlifts and box and deadlifts and burpees. Either one of those, you want to die. Okay, so we'll spend a good 10 minutes reviewing your deadlift form. Okay, which seems excessive, but all you got to do is type in deadlift on YouTube and watch what is out there. And <laughs> there's very few instances of what I would consider to be a deadlift. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a, a student of Marty Gallagher's. Uh, I go by what he says when it comes to how to master certain skills, and uh, we, we hammer technique on deadlift as hard as hard we can. But this is our chance to go back and say, hey, I know you've been doing swings for eight years. I bet we can tune you up. I bet we can find something in your movement pattern that needs to be optimized somehow, okay? Then a workout overview. So the workouts aren't complex, okay? Usually it's a coupleless, triplets, quads, usually three to four elements. Sometimes five. Five is a lot of elements for my concern, okay? In a workout, we're going to go through this, okay, here's, here's the workout, here are the elements, and I'll literally say, okay, I'm going to scale boom, 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 boom for this, 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 and this, okay? Get your equipment ready for that. If you don't need to scale, grab your weights, make sure you know where your stuff is, make sure your water's here, make sure you know where the chalk is, okay? And then the actual workout itself, 12 to 23 minutes, okay? If you see a 12 minute workout on the board, you're going to take tomorrow off from the workout, very possibly from work too. <laughs> okay, so the shorter the workout, the more it's going to suck, okay? 23 minute workouts are usually reserved for the Medal of Honor workouts. It's a partner workout, which means I have a 12 and a half, 12 minute workout for each person. So each person gets about, give or take, 12, 13 minutes of work, okay? And then clean up and a finisher, okay? So um, clean up means the room. So I, I, I came from a background why I, I love team sports, love wrestling, okay? You take care of your equipment first and yourself next. Okay, so the room is returned to the state it was before you came. This oh, should be better state than when you came in, okay? Everything goes away, and then we do a finisher. And I'll explain what a finisher is, but a finisher is going to help you, I think, in the long run. It's a cool thing. People love them, but it's also a chance to kind of bring everybody down at this high. And it's a community. It's a bonding time, too. I try to make, I make, make finishers a a, a two-person finisher as opposed to by yourself, okay? All right, so the Big Bang Theory. So what is the Big Bang, okay? What's in your toolbox? Okay, so this is my toolbox. My toolbox started right here with two kettlebells. I had a 53 and a 35, okay? That was my toolbox for a long, long time. And I, I brought my toolbox into Ballet Sport and Health and had to put a padlock on it. I had to chain it literally to the, to the weight rack, okay? So my toolbox is very, very simple, but everything in my toolbox has been thought out. I do not add, so I'll show you in a minute. It took me three years to add one tool to my toolbox. One tool, three years to get it in there, okay? So, Big Bang Tool is the biggest impact on, on your athlete's movement, performance, and or physique, okay? That's what it is, okay? It's not gonna be something small, bicep curl, curls, tricep extensions, legs. It's gotta be a big bang movement. In other words, it's gotta hit them from head to toe or it doesn't go in the toolbox, okay? The number of tools you have should be small. You don't need to have, so you know, so someone goes, well, I, I, I set the workouts all around the world, okay? I got guys, forward operating bases, on, on installations in Korea, Afghanistan, Iraq, okay? What do you need? You need a kettlebell, a jump rope, and a pull-up bar, okay? I can keep you, I can't, I can't make you stronger, but I can keep your lungs up to the capacity you need to stay where you, you did them too. <laughs> so for a long period of time with a minimal amount of equipment, okay? And, and keep you mentally occupied at the same time. So you don't need, you don't need a 20,000 square foot gym with you know, 100 different machines in there, you know, totally $1.2 million of equipment. I can outfit you with a dragon door kettlebell, a jump rope, and a pull-up bar and get you in, I would say, operational shape in a relatively short period of time, okay? So multi-joint, high tension or compound, that's the cutoff, okay? Even the wheel of pain, how many of you guys use the ab wheel? God bless you guys, that's awesome, okay? Why? Because it's high tension, right? It is high tension from your nostrils through your navel to your toes, right, okay? It is a big movement, big hinge, right? And you have to have complete and utter control of your whole body, okay? Get someone who can do 100 sit-ups, 
I'll share something who can't do one wheel of pain. Literally. Done it many, many, many times. Oh, yeah, I do sit-ups all the time. Here, try this. <laughs> On the floor, right? They have, they have, I don't understand. I can't do it. Oh, my back hurts, right? You don't have a lock down. Okay, all right. So, once again, that includes kettlebell, lovely bar, and body weight techniques. Okay, so now, better to have too few than too many. Learn how to use the tools in your toolbox in as many ways as possible as opposed to adding tools to the toolbox. Does that make sense? You don't need more stuff. You need, to, you need to know more about what you have, okay? If I'm teaching you how to shoot, I'm not going to show you seven ways to clear a jam. I'm going to show you one way. And you're going to learn how to apply it in seven different ways. Bill Ross, you're going to show someone how to do an arm bar and seven rounds to get there, right? Not seven different arm bars. You're going to perfect that one arm bar and you're going to find out different ways to get there and how to maximize the tool you have in hand, okay? And once again, think about this. The more stuff you throw at your athletes, the more stuff they need to master. So you're going to dilute some big skills with some small, minor, you know, low-level skills. Do you really want to do that? No. You want to hammer those big, powerful skills and make sure they can maintain those and get stronger in those. Okay, so what's in my toolbox? That's it. Three things. Kettlebells, Olympic bars, and body weight skills. Okay? It's a small list. But you go, wow, how do you, how can you, so, so I did the math, I was sitting back there, and I'm going, okay, eight years of workouts, 365 days a year, two to three to four workouts a day, okay? I rounded up to 8,500 workouts in eight years that I've run, okay? Using, now, starting off, honest to God, with just kettlebells for the first two or three years, because we couldn't afford bars and plates. So we had some, we had, we had some, uh, you know, we had some uh, wheels of pain, but I couldn't afford plates and walls. Like I was, I was lucky to pay the freaking rent for the first three years anyway. So I had a hard time doing that. So we didn't have, we didn't have bars for a few years. Okay. So there you go. So with those tools, I want to. So, so these are the techniques we use. Okay. So I tell someone who comes to an HKC, you have the perfect skill set to be able to teach a group class. That's all you need. Okay. They go. But, but, but it's, it's only deadlifts and swings and goblet squats and get-ups. Yes, you have the perfect framework, frame, framework to teach a group class. All you need is a couple bodyweight skills, okay, and an imagination, okay, or a good guidance, some good guidance to teach absolutely incredible classes. Okay, so if you have someone who's, so, so here's my thing, okay, how many of you guys assess your training, your, your people's shoulders on a regular basis, mobility of their shoulders? Okay, you should do it weekly, okay? Okay, here's the thing. If you're spending time in front of a computer, okay, or they're runners, runners are notorious, horrible shoulders, right? Great quads, great calves, horrible shoulders, okay? They should not be snatching, okay? I would say that, so there was a comment by an Olympic, some very famous Olympic league coach, and I gotta find the guy's name, okay? He said that 3% of the population, 3% of the population is physically designed to do Olympic lifting. 3%. But 100% of the CrossFit population does it. Okay? In my gym, only about 20% of my guys snatch. You go, oh, that's not right! Everybody should snatch. No, they shouldn't. Okay? I have to, I, so my, my requirement for my guys to, to, to practice with the RKC snatch test is, you've got to be able to press your snatch weight bar 10 times right and left in the same, right, right back to back, 10 on the right, before you can start doing practicing for the snatch test, okay? So if you can't press it 10 times here and press it 10 times here without putting the bell down, you got no business doing 100 snatches ballistically overhead. You can't prove to me you can't control that position without being able to press it that many times. Okay, the 10's a big number to me, I'll explain why in a minute, okay? So, but also, so deadlift, swing, clean, goblet squat, kettlebell squat, and thruster, these are the big bang things. You'll see those things in, if the kettlebell's involved, nine of the 10 workouts, literally. Goblet squats, clean, swing, deadlift, you know, thruster. Okay, so on the right-hand side, that's really my advanced curriculum. Press and snatch, get up, we don't put it in workouts, and I do it for a reason. I don't think the get up can be well served I'm trying to do it for time or for reps. It's something you have to go slow, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mobility, it's a conditioning drill, but it's a slow motion drill. You know, we did a workout, okay, so 
you were all young and stupid once. Some of you are still there. You, have, you haven't got the benefit of, of age and, and decrepitude and arthritis and most of your joints, okay? So think of this, 53 pound kettlebell, 100 Turkish get-ups for time. <laughs> Danny's face like, why would you do that? Because I was stupid, okay? And it wasn't, no, it, so, so 100 get-ups for time, it took me about 30 minutes to do 100 get-ups for time, okay? And I'm, and I'm slow, and I do them you know, relatively clean, okay? That was the stupidest workout of all time, okay? I did complete disservice to the Turkish get up, okay? And you would too, okay? Not something we'll do for time. So we don't do those for time. We do do the jerks though. I have a select group of guys who can do the kettlebell jerk, and which is an awesome technique, okay? And then we also mix in single bell work, double bell work, and then mixed load work as well, okay? So, then if, so if you look at this here, the combination of going through it with singles, with doubles, with mixed bells, with gradient bells, start with this one, go to this one, go to that one, then go back to the next one, you have literally thousands and thousands of variables just right there alone, okay? So next thing, so plates and bars, okay? Deadlift front squat. Marty Gallagher's not looking at me, so I can, I can, I can say Zercher squat, <laughs> okay? So I love the Zercher, but it's an advanced technique, and most women don't like it because it hurts. It's uncomfortable, okay? But lots of deadlifts, Lots of front squats, lots of clean. Some pressing, once again, most people's shoulder mobility is not sufficient enough to press overhead with any sort of good form, okay? Push, press, thrusters, jerk, and snatch. Once again, that's on the right side because that's reserved for a very, very few number of people, okay? It is mostly not safe. You have to have the posture, anterior strength. You have to have the mobility. You have to have the, um, I want to say wisdom, but seasoning. You've got to do a lot of snatching at light loads before you can do heavier loads. And you've got, your body has to work on autopilot. So I always joke around, so, you know, when you first learn a skill, it's gonna be check, 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 check. It's gonna be 15 things on your checklist, okay? But when you master that skill, and you've done it for a long time, what does it take? Check, go. You don't have to think about it, you can execute, okay? Can you go? Yes, I can. You don't think about it anymore, you just go after it, okay? Body weight skills. You know, this is not a complete list, but a good start, okay? Push-ups, pull-ups, burpees, sit-outs. If you don't want to sit out, I'll be happy to show you. It's a lot of fun, okay? Body weight squats, headsets and handstands, cartwheels. Cartwheels, okay? I love cartwheels, okay? I'm 54 years old. I'll do cartwheels down the room, back and forth, okay? They're awesome. Do you want to see someone, if, if, if someone has, so I do a lot of work on asymmetry work and also neurological work on the right and left hand, okay? Phil's done the Philippine martial arts. I know Mike has as well, okay? First time you see someone swing a stick with the left hand, it's awesome, it's great. You will see how neurologically stunted you are on the left side, okay? Why do I, such a huge, huge proponent for kettlebells? Because you can hide behind a neurologically stunted left hand with a strong right side, okay? But you can't hide behind a neurologically stunted left hand pressing a kettlebell or a snatching kettlebell left side, left side, okay? It'll be a completely different movement pattern and absolutely foreign to most people. So, you know, once again, neurologically, I'm reinforcing neurological competency by using two kettlebells, not a bar, two kettlebells instead, okay? So, crawl and rolling, those are all really, really popular things, okay? What I also add in there, based on what Dan John said, as a martial artist, I've been doing break falls and, and that kind of stuff for years and years and years, but showing my clients what's going to kill me faster than cancer? A fall. Literally. Okay, if I were to fall off the stage today, which is a great possibility, okay, and I broke my hip, okay, my chances of dying from complications of that fall are much greater than me dropping dead from cancer in the same time, period of time. Okay, so falls are huge. So, you know, once again, I have clients who literally go up to 84 years old, okay? We spend a lot of time doing naked get-ups, working on bodyweight squats, working on tactical lunges, okay? building the strength, stability, mobility, and confidence in getting up and down off the ground, okay? I, I, I'll tell you a quick story. A client of mine named Mike. Mike was one of the first people to go through chemotherapy. There's 212 people in the chemotherapy, first, the first pass, the first pass of chemotherapy, right? Of the 212 people, 210 of them are dead, okay? Mike's around, and he thinks there's another guy who's still alive, okay? He's had cancer, all kind of cancer, his whole, his whole adult life, okay? He's still on chemo, okay? So Mike comes in the first day, and he, we have like four or five steps up our, our front door to our place, right? He makes it up the steps, and it took a while, and he sat down. Our first session, we talked for 45 minutes, just talked about his goals, his background, what does he want to do, okay? When it was time to re-up his, his, his package, okay, like 10 weeks later, eight weeks later, okay, his girlfriend calls me and goes, 
the hell are you doing with Mike? And I'm like, oh my God. He's like, he's hurt. He's sick. You know, I go, what do you mean? He goes, he will not leave me alone. <laughs> Think about it. Okay. So we, 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 I'm going, I'm going uh, and that's good. <laughs> you know, and so, so Mike now, he, he, he shows up. You hear the screech of the tires, he comes in, he's walking up the stairs, hey, let's go! Just drop, he just wants to go, right? This is not the same man who walked in my door, okay? He's still on chemo, right? He's still, had, he's still having surgeries to take care of some, of some other stuff going on, okay? But he is a different person, literally changed this guy's life. And of course, his girlfriend's not really happy about it, he seems to be enjoying the hell out of it, so. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so additional equipment, okay, once again, very small toolbox, kettlebell, limit bars, body weight skills, okay? Cross cores in there, jump rope, we do a lot of jump rope, okay, wheel of pain. That's, uh, we, you know, people can, can, can tell me, like, oh, yeah, it must be Saturday because I'm still sore from the wheel of pain on Tuesday, you know, okay? Dynamax balls, plyo boxes, Indian clubs, and mace. I added two tools to my quick toolbox. It took three years to make the decision. Indian clubs and mace. They are not part of the workout. They are never parts of the workout, okay? But they're part of the mobility work we do, either for cool, cool downs or warm ups, okay? Those two tools, we, we are using one of the most ancient tools known to man for strength and conditioning, okay? If you have yet to explore Indian clubs with a mace, you are doing yourself a disservice. If you are lifting, if you're doing any overhead work, okay, if you're doing any pressing work, if you are doing um, anything that involves upper body extension, stability, and mobility, you need to look at that. Indian clubs and the mace, both tools are spectacular. And once again, in any environment, don't go to YouTube and look because it's gonna suck, okay? But there's some really good qualified information with Indian clubs and the mace that you, will, you can find. Both excellent tools, but it took me three years to add it to my toolbox before I introduced to my own clients. Okay, so I, I'm kind of slow in adopting change. Still won't touch a freaking Apple product though. All right, so programming, not really fast. So, so powerful workout, okay, has to be doable by all athletes. Okay, now doable means they can do either a either do the exercise as listed on the, on the workout, or I can scale it to make sure that they can get a comparable exercise. Okay, quality over quantity. There is no compromise, okay? Either you do it right or you do something else. Simple as that. I, I, do, I cannot afford, nor will I tolerate someone getting hurt working out. Not gonna happen, okay? We're gonna either show you the right technique, build the, build the basis of that technique, and get you going through it, or you're just not gonna do it, okay? I want to stimulate my guys, not annihilate, okay? Very, there are some workouts, some of the every minute on the minute workouts, you're gonna crush people, okay? I don't care. If you just, you can run a marathon, you can run sprints. Some of the every minute of the minute workouts will crush the best athletes you have. That's what they're designed for. They're designed to crush you. Two minutes, 17 seconds. Good to go. All right, so don't forget fun. They gotta, they gotta enjoy it, okay? It's gonna be a lot of fun, okay? So low reps equals high quality. I wanna keep the reps as low as possible, okay? I'm saying three, five, seven, nine reps is the norm for each technique, okay? Now, 10s, 20s, 30s, 50s, 75s, 100s, You'll see in a lot of workouts, okay? Three, five, seven, nine. That's our normal rep count for our workouts. And Derek, ask Derek. He's done a bunch of our workouts. Three, five, seven, nine. Very rarely over that. If it is over that, it's jump rope, right? And 75, 100 reps, okay? Why? I want to reinforce high quality movement. If you're doing 50 of something, how many of those 50 are going to be good? I mean, really, really good quality exercise movement that's going to take inroads into actual strength and actual tension development the first three or four or five, maybe? Because once you go beyond that, you're just trying to survive. You're trying to get the reps in, okay? So I want high quality, high tension movement as opposed to just throwing crap after crap after crap and building crap as a base. Crap, that's horrible. Okay, all right, so are you training for today or tomorrow? Okay, I'm talking looking at, I want to be as consistent as humanly possible. I want people to come back for years, okay? Eight years. My average client is five years. Okay, consistent. I have new clients starting. My average client's been there five years. I have a core group been there eight years. Okay, that's consistency. That is just great. Okay, can you do that? Can you build that? The reason why is we have high quality movement, we have fun, and the people keep coming back because of it. Okay, so half-ass movement, half-ass reps equal half-ass results. Okay, you may, get, you may get great results at the onset, but it's gonna fall apart eventually. Okay, you can't build a foundation of sand and it's just survive, okay? So movement variety, every workout, warm up, or cool down is gonna have every one, push, pull, squat, hitch, carry, other. I guarantee it, okay? Because it's in every workout. If it's not in the workout, it's in the warm up, or it's in the cool down, 
Okay, so I always try to include every one of those in every one of the workouts, okay? All right, so ineffective or dangerous. Crush the athlete, high number of reps. If you're doing 50, 100, 150 or something, you're gonna cheat that. Look at the CrossFit games. Nobody watch the CrossFit games? I can't, I can't watch it. I can't watch the quality that they think that they, they, they count good rep for, okay? I don't want that. I want as high quality as possible. All right, so examples. 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, one round of time. How many of each one of those are going to be worthwhile? Five, six, seven, whatever. Not enough to make any difference, okay? You're just going to crush the guy. Deadlift, one and a half times body weight. Bench, one times body weight. Clean, point seven times body weight. Ten times the first time for each one of those. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. How many of those would be quality reps? Yeah, exactly. When you're doing deadlift ten times, one and a half times your body weight, that's not going to be quality reps. You're surviving. No more than anything else. One mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, another mile run. Okay. God bless Murph. Michael Murphy was a Medal of Honor recipient. Okay. You're just suffering. That's just that's just agony. It's what I'm concerned. Okay. Bull. Another one. Another another uh, another uh, hero workout. 200 double unders, 50 overhead squats at 135 pounds. Dan, what do you think of that? Is that a good idea? That's ridiculous. Yeah, he just says it. It's ridiculous, okay? 50 pull-ups in a one-mile one, okay? Not good. Okay, so here's here's an example of some of my workouts, okay? Really simple ones, okay? I got times up, minimum 19 seconds. Okay, quick. Here we go. So, challenge to do a fatigue without destroy, quality first and last, low reps, high quality movement, okay? So here you go. It's a wonderful life. 100 jump rope, 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 50 bodyweight squats, as many rounds as possible in 20 minutes. Can you guys do that? Now, high side is the really good guys will do more than the guys who don't have the conditioning for it, okay? But every person can do that, okay? Skin mark. I make great names in workouts, okay? So, 100 yard run, eight toes of bar, six kettlebell, two down swings, four goblet squats, okay? Once again, can everybody do that? Yes. The guys who are really, really strong can do more. The guys who aren't as strong, aren't as mobile, down the wind for it, won't do as many, okay? Knocking futs. <laughs> I said knocking futs, okay? Deadlifts, double kettlebell squats, Bear crawl. The bear crawl is the worst part. Like, it's right there, okay? As many rounds as possible in 22 minutes. There's the, the qualification for the loads, okay? Once again, all those workouts are doable, right? By anybody you have in there, okay? How about the other examples? You'll be scaling the hell out of this thing, right? Or have to do something completely different, okay? OMFG. I'm not really sure what that means, but you'll have to fill me in, okay? Double kettlebell cleans, 10 burpees, 10 squats, 10 push ups. Once again, if they can't do double kettlebell cleans, what do they do? Two-handed one, kettlebell cleans, or one-handed cleans. Same thing for the squats. Scaling is the key to make this thing work, okay? Is there any fun of it? Name it, okay? Naming it, the whole point behind that is, is naming is, if you name the workout, you go, oh my god, knocking thoughts killed me, right? And they'll talk about it. Give them a language, give them a verbiage, give them a common, a common uh, vocabulary they can talk about, okay? If you name it, they'll talk about it, okay? If I say, do a kettlebell clean. Every one of you guys know what that means, right? But if I say knocking butts was horrible, okay, it is. All right, so keep it simple, rep schemes, really fast, and rep, as many rounds as possible in the given amount of time, okay? Every minute of the minute, it's a crushing. They're horrible, but they're very effective for uh, cardiovascular and aerobic strength, conditioning, okay? Ladders, you know, waves, you may not know what waves are. Partner workouts, once again, same thing as an AMRAP, wrap, but you, one person goes, one person rests, okay? Rep schemes, couples, triple quads, whips, chains, whips and chains, I like that. Biathlons, triathlons, there's about seven more as well, okay? These are all variety, but it allows you to work very, very hard. Workouts, 12 to 16 minutes, 17 to 20, 20 to 23. Throughout the week, we wave those, literally. I built the wave in there, so the longest, hardest workout Saturday morning, okay? Finishers, what's a finisher? Something fun, mobility complex, crawling, naked get-ups, juggling, Juggling and look up cognitive collie, okay? Awesome stuff. Headstands, handstands, rolled in, break, break falls, uh, hip flexes and hamstrings, okay? That's it. So I had to rush. I almost made it in time. All right, good. All right, so do I have no, no time for anything else? All right, thank you so much, guys. I hope you got some.